Hello everyone. Today we will learn impulse train sampling. In the left, I have drawn a impulse train, which is a sequence of impulses. One at one at t equal to zero, another at t equal t and two t, three t, all have areas equal to one. So when we multiply our signal x t with this impulse train g of t, then we get y of t. This is how we do impulse train sampling. Basically. we will see that y of t is actually the sampled version of x of t let us see how so here we we are seeing y t equal to x of t into g of t in if we take fourier transform then y of omega will be 1 upon 2 pi x of omega convolution of g omega g of omega isn't it because multiplication in time domain results in convolution of convolution in omega domain in frequency domain right now x of omega is the free, is the fourier transform of x of t and g of omega is fourier transform of g of t now let us see how to find fourier transform of impulse train for that let us move to this sheet now fourier transform periodic signal since the impulse train is a periodic signal with time period t therefore we know the formula of imp, the formula of Fourier transform for periodic signal is g of omega is equal to summation k tends to minus infinite to infinite two pi c k del omega minus k omega naught. Right now here c k is the Fourier series coefficient of the impulse train. So first let us see how to find the Fourier series coefficient of impulse train. Now here I am finding impulse train. I am seeing impulse train and we are finding its Fourier series coefficient. So I have taken impulse train g of t again the same. it is starting from 0 t equal t t equal to 2 t here i have written some of the properties of the impulse train like it is an even function it is a two sided signal two sided means it is start from minus infinity and ends at plus infinity it is periodic with time period t it is unbounded right because the magnitude goes to infinity and it is not absolute integrable right so we can write g of t in this manner summation m tends to minus infinite to infinite del t minus m t because it is the sum of the shifted impulse right now fourier series coefficient we are interested in finding so what is the formula of fourier series coefficient the ck ck is exponential fourier series coefficient so ck is 1 by t so integration over a period t x t raised to 1 j q omega not t i am taking limit as minus t by 2 so t by 2 i have written x t as summation del t minus m t now in this period minus t by 2 to t by 2 from the diagram we can see only one impulse exist which is at t equal to 0 it means only del t exist so i have written del t here and e raised to our minus jq omega not to dt now we know xt into del t is x of 0 into del of t right so using this property i am i am putting t equal to 0 in e raised to power minus j q omega not t by putting t equal to 0 it will become 1 so the integration become 1 by t minus t by 2 so t by 2 del t dt now we know in this period it is the area of the impulse so we know area under the area of the impulse train is 1 so that is why the ck we have got ck we have got 1 by t now in this formula that we have seen the fourier transform periodic signal 2 pi ck we are putting ck as 1 by t del omega minus k omega not this is the fourier transform of our impulse train on drawing this we are seeing that g of omega will be another impulse train so what we are seeing that the fourier transform of an impulse train is another impulse train the only difference is in the area the area of impulse train was 1 here the area is 2 pi by t right now let us come to our let us come to the main concept impulse train sampling here we have seen till this point that the y of omega will be 1 by 2 pi x of omega convolution g of omega now just now we have seen that g of omega is summation k tends to minus infinite infinite 2 pi by t del omega minus k omega not now 2 pi 2 pi cancel 1 by t outside summation k tends to minus infinite infinite x of omega, x of omega we are we can take x of omega inside the summation why because it is independent of k so anything which is independent of k we can take it inside the summation on convolution del omega minus k omega not right now we know that xt convolve with del t minus t not whenever we do a convolution of any signal with any impulse 
then this result follows x t minus t naught. So here also a signal is convolved with del omega minus q omega naught with an impulse. So I am writing here x omega minus q omega naught 1 by t del k tends to minus infinite to infinite. This is the spectrum of the sampled signal. This is the mathematical calculation for the sampling. Now let us understand it with the help of example. I am taking the spectra of our signal x of t is x of omega in this way minus omega m to omega m. Here we can see omega m is a maximum frequency component. It is a low pass signal whose bandwidth is omega m. Now we know y of omega is 1 by t and shifted version of x of omega right. So on putting k equal to 0 it will be x of omega by t. So I have drawn this part 1 by t and x of omega on putting k equal to 1 it will shifted by x omega minus omega naught. So I have shifted it from 0 to omega naught and again drawing it on shifting k equal to it is shifted to 2 omega naught right in this way. So this will be omega m this will be omega naught minus omega m this will be omega naught plus omega m this will be 2 omega naught this is 2 omega naught minus omega m 2 omega naught plus omega m right this is the spectra of the sampled signal. Now let us see some of the points related to the sampling. We can see to prevent overlapping of the different spectra right they can be overlapped depending upon the values of the omega m and omega naught. So to prevent to prevent overlapping this value omega naught minus omega m this value omega naught minus omega m should be greater than omega m isn't it omega naught minus omega m should be greater than or equal to omega m. So here we can see omega naught must be greater than 2 omega m. This is actually the Nyquist theorem for sampling which says that the sampling frequency I am writing omega naught as omega s now to refer it as a sampling frequency which should be greater than twice of the maximum frequency component of the input signal. This is the Nyquist theorem for sampling point number one. Now point number two omega s equal to omega m it is a minimum frequency for a signal to get sampled properly sampled right and so this is known as Nyquist sampling frequency now whenever omega s is greater than 2 omega m we will call it as oversampling omega s equal to omega m critical sampling and when omega s is less than 2 omega m then overlapping will occur this is known as aliasing or undersampling also right now point number four what are the output frequency component present in the sampled signal? So here we can see the output frequency component present are omega m, omega s minus omega m, omega s plus omega m, 2 omega s minus omega m, 2 omega s plus omega m and so on. So I am generalizing it here as omega m and omega s plus minus omega m where n is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3. Now let us see how to reconstruct the signal. So to reconstruct the signal, this was our original signal. If we pass it using the low pass filter if we pass it use through the proper low pass filter we will get the proper signal so i am drawing it drawing here a low pass filter right low pass filter whose critical frequency is omega c and i am taking its amplitude as t why because here it was 1 by t and here it was 1 so get it proper signaled i am multiplying it again by t to get proper signal right now what is the constraint on this critical frequency of the filter it should be omega c it should be greater than omega m right and should be less than omega s minus omega m so this is the constraint on the critical frequency of this low pass reconstruction filter so this is the spectra of the reconstruction filter and we know that its time domain function will be like this right <clears throat>